The road less traveled can be the most terrifying of them all. That's why I'm going to share with you some incredible horror games that you haven't played. I'm Adam Scott, and let's take a look at some hidden gem horror games. If you're interested in experiencing horror through a cultural lens that rarely gets exposure in video games, Devotion is worth checking out. This is a first-person psychological horror game developed by Red Candle Games. They set out to create a horror game that introduced players to Taiwanese culture. You play as the troubled screenwriter Du Feng Yu, whose deteriorating financial situation is creating a downward spiral for her family. Set in Taiwan in the 1980s, with most of the story taking place in an apartment complex that's slowly turning into a nightmarish version of reality. The gameplay is focused on exploring the apartment complex and interacting with various objects to solve puzzles. Each area of the complex represents a different year that you can freely navigate, which creates a really interesting atmosphere to see how the events have changed the environment over time. This game has drawn comparisons to PT, What Remains of Edith Finch, and Layers of Fear due to its oppressive atmosphere. Its largest criticisms focus on the length of the game, which is only about three hours. However, those are a dense and haunting three hours that are well worth a play. Unquestionably, one of the best horror games ever is Silent Hill 2, which is why so many developers have tried to capture its essence with varying degrees of success. Lost in Vivo perfectly captures the feeling from Silent Hill 2 by being scary first and foremost. Lost in Vivo was the darling of Scream streamers in 2018 and 2019, however, it still hasn't gotten the recognition it deserves. Don't be fooled by its purposefully dated looking visuals. So many devs botched that classic 90s survival horror look and feel. However, the one-man developer Akuma Kira nailed it with Lost in Vivo. Kira also developed Spooky's House of Jump Scares, but unlike that game, Lost in Vivo rarely relies on jump scares. Instead, it creates a rich atmosphere that envelops you from the stripped down and blocky visuals that create an otherworldly feeling to the incredible sound design that is nothing less than perfect at filling the air with groaning creatures, random sounds, and distant movement that keeps you on edge. And remember how that game Eternal Darkness would mess with you? Well, I don't want to say too much, but Lost in Vivo is even more immersive. Throughout, you'll navigate seemingly disconnected nightmarish worlds, solving puzzles, fighting the horrific monsters with a variety of weapons to ultimately learn what it means to be lost in vivo. It all starts with a dead girl. Bloober Team is rumored to be developing the next Silent Hill game, and if true, their title The Medium is the likely reason they were given the reins. In this psychological horror adventure game, you play as Marianne, a medium who can connect with the other side. She's drawn to the haunted Niwa Hotel to uncover the origin of her clairvoyant abilities. The story is a real standout with excellent pacing and plotting, with deep and multi-dimensional characters, and an intriguing supernatural mystery to uncover. The signature feature is the split reality where Marianne can exist in both the physical world and the spirit world at the same time. You'll use this ability to navigate the decaying environments and solve puzzles. The visuals are top tier, the voice acting is amongst the best in all of gaming, and the Maw should be included in the most terrifying antagonists in all of gaming. I highly recommend The Medium. Check out my full review to learn why this game isn't what you've been told. Were you one of those few gamers who experienced PT before Konami erased it from the face of the earth? If not, you're still in luck. Visage was clearly made for all those gamers who were waiting for the full version of PT that'll never come. This is a first person game set in a large mansion and played over four chapters, each focusing on another previous resident of the mansion. The resemblance to the PT demo and its psychological horror themes are unmistakable. The biggest complaint is that the progression can be a bit too slow at times, however for me this was never a problem as the pacing really helped to build that tension. The game has earned continuous praise for its imaginative designs and memorable set pieces, often toying with the players heads and forcing them to face a wide variety of fears. It's definitely not for the faint hearted, but Visage proves a fantastic horror experience. Ah! 
Horror games often struggle to strike the right balance between atmosphere and gameplay. I've seen a ton of horror games nail one but screw up the other. Prognostic does an amazing job with both. In this first-person detective horror game, you return to investigate the mysterious circumstances surrounding your family's death. Throughout, you'll uncover the secrets of the cursed town, searching for missing people, and hunting down the killers before there are more murders. You'll use both traditional detective methods and master a wide range of realistic psychic practices to uncover those secrets. As you explore the house and the broader town, you'll increase your abilities, which will aid you in your investigation. However, you're not alone. An evil entity threatens your safety. This is one not to miss. All right, well, there are some great horror games that have flown under the radar. Have you played any of these games? What'd you think about them? And what are some other great horror games that you know no one's talking about? I'd love to talk about it in the comments down below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. If you want even more horror games, check out my other episodes. Also, if you're not subscribed, it's a great time to do so. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.